Welcome to this tutorial about AI. Today we will be creating a civilian example. So we will be creating all the parts needed to have a civilian uh, to make it react and run and hide and just look like a civilian. Uh, I will not be going into detail into all of the different parts. I will leave links to the parts of tutorials where I explain all the parts in more detail if you want to understand a part that you haven't encountered before. But we'll be going through every part at least briefly so you get some understanding about what's going on in this case. So let's jump in and see what the end result will look like. So this is what we will be creating today. We have an AI which is just walking around being idle and picking random points to walk to and um, just taking care of its own business, walking around slowly and then at any point where we press a key we simulate being shooting out a gun and it will run away to some place where it is safe in relation to that gun uh, shot that was heard. And it will stay in safety there for 10 seconds until it determines that it's safe again and we can do the same thing again. And you can see it's essentially trying to find a line of sight spot where it finds safety. Then it goes back to its normal state once it has determined that uh, danger has been averted. So it's essentially just a basic civilian AI that we're creating. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 5 and this works just as well in Unreal Engine 4 of course, although the visuals might be slightly different. Um, so let's create our civilian then. So to start off, we are working from the project that we have been using so far in uh, AI when it comes to behavior trees and such. So what we will be doing is we will just be adding a new folder and we'll call this civilian. So we have it a little bit organized. And hold on, I have some cats fighting here. Sorry about that interruption. Um, anyway, so to continue, uh, let's create a child of our AI character. We'll call this BP uh, civilian. And we'll move that into our civilian folder. Inside our civilian folder we want to create uh, a behavior tree. So we'll call this BT civilian. We want to have a blackboard for our behavior tree. So we go to artificial intelligence and blackboard and call it BB underscore civilian. Like so. And let's go back to our AI character and do the following. So this is the parent character. And what we want to do is we are at begin play wherever that is. Let's find it. Um, Where do we have it? Sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong class, I think. Uh, we want to have our controller. Let's see, did we create a controller? We have an AI controller over here. And we'll create a blueprint class of that as well. We'll call this one um, civilian controller. Just so we have everything separated and available to change if we want to. Now our civilian controller will instead of uh, its parent, which is the AI controller, be using a different um, behavior tree. So we will not be running the behavior tree of the parent. We will be instead running the behavior tree of our civilian over here. Now that's hooked up, let's go to our uh, behavior tree. And here we want to make sure that we have a blackboard asset that is representing this. Since we, are, we created one for the civilian, we'll be using that one. Now, in essence, what we're going to be creating is, uh, we're going to be having a civilian that will react to a player character 
and it will try to run away and hide, but it will only do so when it perceives the player character to be a threat. So we will be having a event on the player character which will uh, symbolize something like shooting a gun or something of that nature, which will generate a noise event and this noise stimuli will cause the civilian to react to it and it will then try to find a place to hide from this character where the noise was created. And it will also have a, an age check, meaning that it will keep track of how long ago this shot was fired. So at some point this civilian will be able to go back to its normal behavior of not trying to run away and hide again. So those are essentially the components that we're going to be creating. And we will also be hooking this up with a little bit of uh, changes to the animation to make sure that it looks like it's behaving in a calm way um, before it's running away and a little bit more erratic way when it is uh, being exposed to a dangerous individual. To symbolize the transition of these different states, we are going to be making use of a sort of state machine. Uh, and by doing that, we will need a enumerator. So we'll go to blueprints and we'll create an enumeration. We'll call this E underscore uh, civilian states. So it will have two states, at least to begin with. So we will have a normal state, which is um, just normal state and we'll have a scared state which will represent when it's trying to run away and uh, find shelter to survive and we will be coming back to using this at uh, several different points later on so it's good to have it created already so the very first state we want this civilian to have is the walking around being normal state we can start off with first replacing our AI character over here with our civilian character. So we have it selected over here, we right click over here, we can say replace the actor with BP civilian. So now we have the... We should have... No. Replace selected character with... Okay, this has been changed a little bit differently, I guess we do this. Uh, the naming was only BPA character, it's changed to the right blueprint, so that's fine. Okay, so now we have our AI character over here, that's our civilian. And we want to also, we need to actually go in here and change uh, the BPA controller to instead be civilian controller over here, so it runs the proper behavior tree as well. Uh, so if we go into the behavior tree of this uh, civilian, what we can do is we bring out a selector. So this will choose which of our different states it will be going through basically. And our first state we want to have is something where we can have a sequence. And we can call this the uh, normal roam state. So this is what the character will do normally when it's not scared. Um, it's always good to have a wait, so we can have a wait of a few seconds here, maybe one. And in before that wait, we'll have it uh, walk around randomly in the map. So we'll create a task, a new task uh, blueprint type. Uh, we override the receive execute AI, so we have the actual event of when the task is being called from the behavior tree. And from here we can do something like uh, get random reachable point in radius. Now, if you're just watching this episode, of course, and haven't followed along with the earlier parts, you need to make sure that you have a volume of a nav mesh bounce volume, which if you press P allows you to see the, the different places where the character has been mapped out as allowed to walk around. So if you don't have one of those in your level, you need to make sure that you have that because this task that we're creating here, get random reachable point in radius, will get us a point um, on a nav mesh uh, that we can actually manage to reach and then return that location to us. Um, so we need an origin, so we get an actual location 
of our controlled pawn. And we send that in here. We need to have a radius. We can promote this to a variable. So we have something we can config afterwards if we want to. A wandering radius. Let's give that a default value of something like, um, let's say 300, that's three meters. That should be reasonable, I think. And uh, yeah, that should probably be fine. And then we want to actually store this information. So we will do that with a blackboard key selector that we will be exposing. So we'll call this um, new on wandering destination. And we'll make it a blackboard selector and we'll make it instance editable so that it's actually shown outside. And we will then uh, make sure to set that blackboard selector with our location that we have gotten now randomly here. Since we are talking about location, we want to have a vector set. So if we drag out this reference to our key selector and then we'll type in uh, set blackboard value and then you have as vector over here. Then we'll plug in our random value over here. Of course, this only is working if we're actually successfully doing this. So uh, you might want to have a fallback state here if you want to. However, if we have not managed to get a new location here, I'm expecting us to just stand still, which is fine also for debugging purposes. So for, for this simple example, this will work fine. Like so. If we have managed to reach this farm, we can now then say that we have finished executing and we can say that this is a success. Like so. We'll go back to our uh, behavior tree close down a few of these things since we don't really need all of them. It makes it a little bit easier to work around. So our behavior tree over here, we will take out and make a task of this task that we just created. However, we get a default name by creating it. So we want to rename this. We'll call this BTT for behavior tree task and call it uh, wandering position. Right, let's call it determine wandering position. So we'll go back to our tree. We will call on the task and here you have our determined wandering position. Now it wants to know what kind of a key should we be setting this to. So we need to go to our blackboard now. And we need to add a key of type vector and we'll call this our <coughs> wandering location. Like so. We go back to our behavior tree and we'll make sure to have our wander location to be set as our new wandering destination that we determine inside of this task. And after we have done that, we also want to actually go to whatever place that we have determined, right? So we'll have a move to, and we'll make sure that it's using the wander location over here to determine or to go to. Let's just try this out and see how this works. So we'll make this window over here so we can actually see it working while we're playing around. And like so. And here we have our character. It's determining a position, it's moving to it, and then it's waiting. It's not super great, but it's, it's fine for now. We will be tuning it a little bit later. Uh, so that seems to be working. That's good. And other than that, we want to have the state where the character is actually scared and trying to hide. So let's bring out a sequence for this and we'll name it um, scared trying to hide. Like so. 
And because we want to make sure that this only happens when the character is scared, we want to have a decorator on this. But we don't have anything to keep track of that shows us if we're scared or not right now. So let's add a key for that specific instance. So we'll go to our blackboard, we'll add a new key, we'll make it a boolean. We will say is in survival mode. And then we can go back to our tree again. We can go to our add decorator on our node and we can say we want a blackboard to check against. We click on this. We can say that we want it to check is in survival mode and we want it to be set, meaning that we want it to be true. And only when that is true, we will be running whatever logic we have here. So what logic will we be having here? Well, essentially what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are hiding from the noise of what scared us. So we will be adding some environmental queries to this later and trying to find a place to hide. And then as that changes, the conditions for this will change and we will go back to this again. So let's actually start off with uh, working on that environmental query to determine where should we be going when we are scared. So we'll go out here and since we have our previous tutorials we have gone through, we have this uh, testing pawn here already. But if you're starting watching this and you haven't done those parts yet, let's just start this from the beginning. So we'll delete that pawn. And what you need to do is you need to create a EQS pawn. And what we have done is already, this is here. This is BP EQS pawn. You create one of those by going to blueprint class and typing in here EQS. And then you get a testing pawn here, actually there. And then you create one of those and you have one of these. That by itself is, this is all you get. So there's no change between my testing pawn and your testing pawn right now. What we need to do is we need to have a query template for it, here, for it here to run so it can actually show us what we're after. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back to our civilian folder. We will right click and then I apologize. I had to go uh, take care of my cats for a little bit. Uh, where were we? We wanted to create a query. Uh, so we right click, we go to artificial intelligence and we go to environment query. We call this uh, EQS and then call it um, uh, find hiding location. Then we open up that and we'll create a generator and we can create a pathing grid to get a number of uh, points around us that are of interest. And let's actually just enable this immediately now on our we'll save this and put this on our pawn our testing pawn so we can get a feel for what we have done so this is what we, it what it will be looking uh, like right now so what we want to do first is we want to find the point where the character that we're uh, trying to hide from or rather where the sound was uh, originating from cannot be seen. So if this player over here shot a gun over here, then maybe we would want to run and hide behind here or behind here if we were standing somewhere here. If we were standing somewhere over here, then we would want to run around and hide over here. So going back to our query again, we want to have a context for our um, hostile enemy. We want to have that person to uh, compare against. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.